Wait. Um, oh, there, he ah. there, 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 there he is. There he is. Right. There he is. Okay. Ah, I apologize. Now go. I'm going to mute. Ah, there you are. There okay, so is. first of all, I'm sorry. Let me apologize. I have two Zooms tonight, and I went into the wrong one. So I'm sitting ah. waiting and waiting and waiting. I get a message from Nomi. Where are you? So I apologize. <laughs> Okay, so I guess without further ado, we'll begin. Uh, I'm Moshe Pinchuk, and uh, I'm the guy who uh, created and tried to run the database. So I'm going to immediately share the database with you, and we can start talking. So you should be able to see the, uh, the database in front of you now on the share screen. Uh, am I right? Do you see the the the, uh, the screen? Mm -hmm. yes. Let me just ask you. Uh, uh, at times, people ask me to record this, and then you can have this as a uh, as a reference tool. Uh, are you okay with me recording this for you? Sure. Okay. So I'm gonna. St oh, it already started recording. Okay. So anyway, so we're re recording, and let me begin. So this database uh, is all about the Talmud Yerushalmi. And it really consists of four uh, separate databases. One database, which I guess is the most important one, is a list or a database of all Rishonim uh, and their quotes or references to the Talmud Yerushalmi. I went throughout the, uh, all the Rishonim. I'm, I'm saying all. That's our vision, of course. Uh, but we're pretty close to there. Uh, and simply collected any time or any place any of the Gaonim or the Rishonim referred to Yerushalmi, put these into a database, and now we can search it. Soon I'll explain exactly how. The other database is really academic work, uh, academic research, different uh, articles, books, papers, what have you, uh, that I've basically indexed so that uh, any time any of these uh, works re references Yerushalmi, you get a, a reference to that place. Uh, the third database is the same with regards to Achronim, uh, to rabbinic literature, which is a much, much smaller database, as you'll soon see. And finally, or maybe I should have said first, you have here a list or of references to all the Geniza fragments that we know of uh, today that uh, of the Talmud Yerushalmi. Uh, so that when you plug in a particular uh, segment of Yerushalmi that you're interested in, you will get back, if it exists, a list of all the, uh, of all the um, uh, Geniza fragments that, that exist. You will get a, a back a list of all the Rishonim that refer to this segment of the Yerushalmi or part of it, uh, a list of a tremendous amount of research, uh, academic research material, and some achronim. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's, ha after having described the contents, um, I will now try to go through the database and just show you how it works. And as we go through, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be discussing various aspects of it. <clears throat> so we are now on the landing page of the, uh, of the database. Um, this is slightly different than what you would see if you would be uh, accessing the database from, from your JTS computers. Then you would just simply get something to the effect of, I'll just turn it into English, um, you know, um, access to the database uh, courtesy of JTS or something like that. And then you just go into continue and you're in. This, this is a kind of entering from a private subscription. So you get a, a, a username and a password. But those of you who have actually seen it uh, or used the database on, on your computer at, uh, at JTS or through your VPN, uh, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Okay, so now we are in. I'm just trying to get all these pictures small, but for some reason, ah, there we go. Uh, this, this is really the, the main page. Uh, let me start from the top. This red uh, strip on the top will be accompanying you throughout 
your uh, tour in the database. This is the main navigation. And let's start with what we have here. You have the left button, which is your search button. By pressing the search button, you really get this page. And down here, column row, Mishnah, word, subject, comment, are all the different types of, of search that are at your fingertips, which of course I will go and explain. Talmud Yerushalmi uh, actually opens up a copy of the uh, Yerushalmi um, that you're familiar with that was uh, put out, I guess, in 2001 by the Academy for Hebrew Language. I have here just, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with this uh, version of the Yerushalmi. And this Yerushalmi is divided into, I'll shoot so you said, into columns and into uh, lines. And that's what our uh, database is based on. So let me just for, you know, let's open up a Masechet. <clears throat> uh, so again, what you're, what we're, we're discussing this, this button over here, Talmud Yushalmi. And this uh, enables you to actually browse through the Yushalmi of the uh, Hebrew Academy or Academy for Hebrew Language. You got to agree to the above conditions, and then you can choose a masechet. Is there anybody here who wants to choose a particular masechet just to see how it looks? Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. Okay. So you go down to Sanhedrin. It, it's according to the alphabet, not according to the uh, the classic uh, order. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Suka, and. Um, And then you just press show. <clears throat> and here you are. Oh, wow. um, right, so I, I hope that this format is familiar to you. This is, I guess, the uh, the state of the art uh, Talmud Yushalmi. This is the most pre precise rendition of the Leiden uh, manuscript. And our search, our column line search is based on this version. So for example, if you're learning some headline and you would like to get some feedback on let's say the first sugya here, then you would plug in this, this column over here is column 1263. And you would be looking for lines one through let's say 15. So if you wanna get back everything there is on this part of the Yushalmi. So first of all, you can easily access the Yushalmi, as I showed you, so that you know the values that you want to put in. And you can then go back to the search. And we're in column row. And now we'll plug in the parameters. So we're on column 1263 from row one. And he automatically, yes? And he automatically plugs in the same column down here. But if you want to, if you want to change it, uh, you know, if your if if your sugya changes uh, columns, you can easily change it to twelve sixty four, let's say, or whatever you want to. But the default would be the same as the above, because at the end of the day, that's the majority of the sugya are on the same on the same column. And we set down to line fifteen. So these four parameters here tell the database that I'm looking for all the information he has on that sugya that we just chose in Sanhedrin. And then you press the search. What? Okay, this is very disappointing. All we got back are, are actually two, two pieces of information. We see that there are no Gniza fragments on the beginning of this Yushalmi. I don't even have any Rishoni on the beginning of this uh, of this Yushalmi. All I have here is a reference to Zachariah Frankel in his Mavoy Yushalmi, and I have a reference to myself. I think this Perakayoko is probably my, my doctorate. So okay, so Yushal, the the first part of Yushalmi Sanhedrin, as you see, is is a little bit disappointing, and to be honest, a lot of places that you're looking for in the Yushalmi, you will get a relatively small amount of results because at the end of the day, you know, you don't have Rishonim quoting Yushalmi left, right, and center. I was hoping, to be honest, I was hoping you would choose something in Brachot 
uh, because over there, uh, you get the results are much more impressive. And uh, I'm going to choose uh, the beginning of Brachot just so that I have a richer table for me to explain things on, if that's okay. So I'm just gonna go and do another search. I don't even have to clear it. All I have to do is, uh, you know, of course the first page of the Yushalmi is gonna be column one. I don't even have to look it up. And the first row is gonna be one. And let's say the first 10 <clears throat> lines of Brachot. And we'll do the search. And, and here you see we get a much, you know, much better results, which are not as all surprising. Instead of two results, if you look on the left here, we have 87 results. Uh, but this again also is not, is not uh, indicative. You'll, you'll, you'll rarely get 87 results on 10 lines. Uh, Brachot just happens to be very rich with, in references. Uh, so let me show you what we got here. Um, the table, this result table, is going to be the same no matter what type of search you choose, whether it's column row or mission or word or subject or comment, you, the, the, the results will always appear in this table. And although I have an English interface, as you see here, the actual table is all in Hebrew. And of course, I can't translate the Yushalmi into Hebrew into English here. So let's see what we have here. Uh, the first set of results, if you look on the right-hand side, uh, is called Ma'agar. Ma'agar means which database he's drawing his information from. And the first database that he's drawing the information from is Kit A Gniza. So we're happy to know that there actually are two fragments, um, either from the Cairo Gniza or it doesn't matter from where, which actually... Uh, um, you know, talk about, about the lines that we chose. And just to, to be clear, <clears throat> we've been waiting for this book, which I'm showing you now. We've been waiting for this book, I guess, for the past uh, 40, 40 odd years. And uh, Shavuos, last Shavuos, finally, uh, this book was published. This contains all known uh, fragments of the Talmud Yushalmi. I mean, it doesn't count, let's say, the, uh, um, the Vatican Ktav Yad or, or, or the uh, Yushalmi Nezikin, but all, the, all the, the bits and pieces of Geniza fragments are, are in here. And this database basically took this book and, and indexed it. So the entire database is based on this, on this book, or the, the entire Kite Geniza is based on this uh, book. So here you're told, for example, we were looking for the first 10 lines from, you know, from, from row one to row 10. And here we're told, uh, you should know that there's a, a fragment on page two in the Ginzi, excuse me, Ushami, that's this book on page two. And that fragment covers lines one through 45. Uh, by the way, if people want to ask or comment, you know, as we go along, then, you know, I'm happy. Just, you know, jump in and I'll try to respond. So here we're told there's a Kite Gniza on this segment and so on and so forth. Uh, the second segment is less relevant to us because we were looking for lines 1 through 10, and we're told that on page 52 in the Ginza Yushalmi, uh, there is a piece that refers from lines 9 through 19. So the only overlap with our segment that we're searching is that lines nine and 10. So it's important to look at this column over here, Tur Shura, because this gives you a, uh, a very um, precise information what exactly the result is talking about. After we've done the Kite Gniza, we go to the Rishonim. So you see here on the right-hand side, from Kitei Geniza turns into Rishonim. And for example, you have a Shibulei Aleket in Inyan Tfila Siman Memchet. And here you have a small snippet of the relevant part in, in, <coughs> in the uh, Shibulei Aleket, which talks about the Yushalmi. Now, since I'm searching for lines one through 10, and I'm being told that this is from, nine, from lines nine through 12, I doubt that it's highly relevant for me, unless punct on that last line, uh, there's something relevant. 
And actually, if I go through a lot of the results, a lot of the results I see have a very small overlap with the section that I was looking for. But nevertheless, the instructions to the, to the, to the database are that he is to return any overlap with the requested segment. So even if there's just one line at the end, he will return it to you. And then it's up to you to decide whether or not you know, this, uh, this result is, is relevant. So as you go through, you see that there's an awful lot at the very end. And there's really not too much on the actual uh, piece that we're looking for. But here, look, here towards the end of the first page, I'm told that there's a Meiri in the Magen Avot, Siman Yudal, so and so on and so forth. Here's a quote of that. And look, this one is on lines four through nine. So this is in the center of the sugya that I'm searching. So this, is, this will probably be useful. Uh, I'd just like to point out, sometimes the quote is long, so you just get a small amount, and there's this line under here, Hatseg Od, you know, show more. And by pressing that, you get the continuation. Sometimes it's, you know, just a few words more. Sometimes it's like a whole bunch more, like this thing over here. Um, now, <clears throat> if I have any comments on any particular result, then you'd have over here where it says he'ara, comment. And you know, if, if there's any comment or any information which might be important about a particular row, it will appear here. These two uh, columns over here uh, are just appear because we're in my uh, subscription as a manager. So I, I have the possibilities to, to erase a row or to edit it, but you won't be seeing these two rows uh, in your results. So let me just briefly go over the structure of the table again. The first column gives you the database that we're drawing from. We take Niza, Rishonim, I'll skip to a later page later to see the other examples. Um, this information, the next one, two, three, four columns tell you where in the Yushalmi we're referring to. So you'll get Masechet Brachot, obviously, Perik Aleph, Mishnah Aleph, which will always be the same Perik and Mishnah. And here you're told which lines in particular the result is referring to. And uh, I think this is a very important column here because sometimes it enables you to weed out information which is probably not relevant to you. The next three columns are, are the information of the results. So here you're given the author and you're giving the reference and re with the, regards to the uh, database of the Rishonim, you're actually given a small snippet or the relevant snippet of the Rishon, which is relevant to you. Um, let me tell you that more often than not, at least when I, uh, when I uh, use this database, the information here is not enough for me. You know, a lot of times you want to see this particular quote, let's say in Machzor Vitli, you want to see it in, in its entire context. So more often than not, once I found this, I go to the uh, Bar Ilan shoot project and then, you know, would like to open up and see the entire thing. Uh, one of my dreams is to somehow be able to, um, uh, how do you say, to interconnect with, uh, with the Barilan Shud project, and then you just click over here and you would automatically open up the uh, entire text in the Shud project. So I'm working on it. I've been working on that for the past, I would say 15 years, but uh, I'm finding it very hard to get anywhere uh, with the project the Shud, but I'm not giving up yet. Um, yeah, so this is the structure of the table. We saw Kitek Nita, we saw Rishonim, and I'd like to show you, um, just another page, so you see the, the other results that there are. I'm going to skip to the last page. Okay, and here you see that the name of the Magar it is not Kite Gniza, it's not Rishonim, but it's Mechkari, which means this would be uh, academic research. Again, you know, you're giving the exact information. And let's look at the first result. So here we're talking about Moskowitz. This is late Moskowitz. 
And I'm referring you to one of his articles called Kifle Girsa, page 210, number Gimel, number three. And he refers to these two lines from four through five. Now, this isn't really a complete reference, but if you hover over, hover over the, uh, this, uh, this blue result, you'll see that a window opens up, which gives you the precise reference. This is Leib Maskwitz. The name of the article is Kifle Girsa. It appears in Tarbid Samech Vav, you know, which is page 187 through, to, through 221. Uh, so this, this is the best I can do here. Uh, sometimes I have permission to actually have a PDF of this article, and then you'll get a hand. I think, let's say over here now. Um, yeah, look over here. Here we have a reference to Epstein. And there is actually, it's not the latest edition, but there is an edition uh, online of Mavola Nusa Hamishna. In this case, you would get that window with a reference, but the cursor turns into a little hand. Now, if I would click this over here, he would actually open up a PDF <coughs> of Mavola Nusa Hamishna. Um, let's just do it. I'm not going to wait till it opens up because this is, you know what, I'll do it on the next one. Uh, here we have another result uh, Rosenberg, Tikune Nuschaot. This is a very interesting little booklet. Nobody really knows who this Rosenberg is. Um, here again, you get a hand. And if I would click it, then he opens up a PDF for me. But I still have to you know, scroll through it in order to get to the page uh, that I want. I don't remember what page uh, he told me, but it's not going to open it up on your page. You'll have to, you'll have to actually scroll, scroll through it. Um, OK. I just got to remember what's happening now. Okay. Oh, wrong place. <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry. I, I just, the, the, the thing here on top blocks me. So I'm just going to do it all over again. Okay, so this is this is where we were. Um, <clears throat> so I just showed you an example of Mechaber. <coughs> and finally, that's why uh, you know, I, was, I was happy to choose the beginning of uh, Brachot because we have everything there. The fourth database that he would draw from is Achronim. And I'm saying this is a very small database there. I think there are less than, uh, uh, than 2,000 uh, rows there. Uh, but here you have, for example, a reference to Gilyone Hashas by Rav Yosef Engel. And here again, you get the hand. And by depressing this, he would open up Gilyone Hashas and for you to flip through. Uh, so this is how the search of column row works. And I've gone through the actual table to show you how it works. Uh, you'll notice here, of course, that in the case of Mechkari and Vachronim, Obviously, I can't put the text over here where it says tzitot. Um, all I can do is reference you to it. Tzitot would really only appear for the cases where I'm quoting from the uh, Rishonim. If I go back to the first page, then uh, you'll get the Rishonim there. Uh, okay, so this is the first search. Uh, are, are there any questions or comments meanwhile? <laughs> Um, did you get your data from people reading the materials or was there like textual recognition software involved? Uh, no, the only people <laughs> reading was basically me. Um, the, the Rishoni was pretty simple. It's really a question of copy and paste from the Project Kashut, from the Bailan Shul project. Although lately I've been adding things which are not there, which of course goes much slower. Um, the vast majority, I would say like 99% of, of everything else is just, you know, as I read through different uh, papers for my work or whatever, so I just make sure that I index them and then I can add them into here. 
Thank you. Yeah, That's a lot hold of on. no, no OCR, no, no fancy stuff yet. But, uh, one day we'll get there. May, maybe I should add another point in this uh, context. Um, what I did was is that I I found or made a list of all the keywords which a Rishon would use when introducing Yerushalmi. Right, by Yerushalmi, and then all the variations of Yerushalmi, Yeru, and Yerush, and, and even uh, you know mistakes, Yerulashmi, whatever. And I told him, listen, go, you know, scan uh, Shibul Aleket. Tell me wherever you find any of these words, Yerushalmi, Talmuda de Bnei Ma'arava, Talmuda de Bnei Eretz Yisrael. Any, any, any term that I'm aware of which can be used to introduce the Yerushalmi, I searched for. And uh, naturally, adjacent to this term, I would actually find the Yerushalmi. Um, this has ups and downs, or actually downs and downs. Uh, sometimes uh, he would be quoting you, uh, he would be saying that he's quoting Yerushalmi and he isn't really quoting Yerushalmi. So I have a list of those places where, where he, he thinks he's quoting Yerushalmi and it's a mistake, or he's quoting a Medrash, or he's quoting a Bavli. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, the bigger problem or the bigger concern is that uh, often enough, uh, the Rishonim would quote a Yerushalmi without even indicating. They would just start quoting Yerushalmi without this introductory word. And I have no way of, of accessing those. I have no way of finding those without the telltale, you know, uh, uh, expression Yerushalmi would have you. Um, Theoretically, you know, people are working on not really um, text recognition, but on author recognition. You know, you, you would theoretically get some kind of software, some kind of artificial intelligence to be able to identify, you know, the language of Yerushalmi, and he might be able, or it might be able to find those locations as well. But that's like one thing which is really uh, missing from this database would be all those places in Rishonim where a Yerushalmi is quoted without, uh, without indicating that he's quoting it. Um, okay, let's look now around the table. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, is there any way to uh, uh, fix it so that you're only, uh, the only results it provides are, say, Geniza fragments or um, Kitvayad or... Uh, quotations from the Rishonim, et cetera. In other words, one of those categories and not all of them together? Um, yes and no. I mean, the, the, the initial table is going to give you everything, uh, but he's going to give it to you in a well-defined order. You will give it Kite Gniza first, Rishonim second, uh, um, Mechkar third, and, and Achronim fourth. So you can always just zoom in because it's going to be ordered in that order. Um, I'll use your question to go on to another place. If you look here, uh, on the right-hand side, there's a picture of a printer and a Word document. And if you click that icon, you get a list of all the results, which you can choose. And so here we're getting those 87 results again, but in a slightly different format. And next to each result, you see there's a little box which you can untick. So for example, if all you are interested is in for, for the sake of argument was just the key take visa, you would leave these two ticked and you would untick the other 85 results. So unticking 85 results is, <laughs> is, 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 is pretty tedious. Uh, usually you have nowhere near this number, but on this print and save page, you can actually choose or unchoose uh, what, you, what you're not interested in. And once you finish unticking what you're not interested in, you can then either save it as a Word document onto your own uh, computer, or you can have it printed, you know, based on how your, your, uh, your computer is, is set up. Uh, I must admit that at this point, the uh, print and the save are not very elegant. You know, it's not, it's a, it, it could be uh, done in a nicer way, but meanwhile, you just get the, uh, the course information. It's basically uh, kind of a, a table and then you could work from there. So th this is the best I can answer you about, you know, choosing which results you want. So you can choose them over here and then you can choose to print or save them uh, at your will. <clears throat> 
I see. Let me just see this. I just see. I'm gonna just hide this guy. Okay. Um, Doctor Pinchak. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Doug at uh, JTS. Um, yeah. I just wanted to uh, compliment you. So I used the database very successfully in September, and within hours of using it, you emailed me to make sure I had good access. Ah, so, okay, okay, so, yeah. So yeah, so like, so you actually, I didn't have to go to you, you came to me, and which was very nice, but I found it very, so everyone knows, I mean, I used this in September, and within the half an hour of being on it, I was able to navigate pretty well. It's a pretty user-friendly. Ah, user okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's very yeah, nice it, that you came it, back to me so fast. I wasn't used to that kind of uh, customer service in academia. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, I don't know what that means about me. That just might tell you how bored I am and <laughs> looking for who went on. No, it was great. It. it was great. But, uh, okay. So I much appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Um, anyway, so where were we? So yeah, so this is the, the table. Um, um, clicking any of the titles here will organize it according to alphabet of that column. Uh, for example, now it's ordered according to databases, but supposing I wanted all the Raviyas or all the Rambans or anything that Moskowitz had to say about this article, about this Yushalmi, then I would click Hamechaber and he would reorganize it in alphabetical order based on Hamechaber. So it would start with Abu Draham, Agur. By the way, the Agur doesn't appear in the Proyekta Uh No, no, sorry, that's a different Agur. And at least this way, he would group together uh, the same author. So, I mean, here in the middle, of course, uh, you get your Yosef Engel, the Gilunea Shas, because he doesn't keep the order of Rishonim and Achronim. But this I found to be quite powerful you know, if you're looking for a particular, I would say, Rishon on the Sugya, then this is the way of grouping them together. Sometimes after you do a search, you realize that you're actually interested in a different search, uh, more precise to you. And if that happens to be over here, you can click this. I mean, our initial search was lines one through 10. But based on the results that I got here, I understand that really what I'm looking for is really lines 10 through 12. So by clicking this thing over here, he automatically uh, does another search based on these parameters. And now I get, instead of 87 results, I just get 60 results, but now we're more focused on the, uh, on the material that I'm looking for. Okay, so I think I went through this, uh, the, the uh, column row search uh, and explained everything about it. By far, this is the most useful or most used uh, search. Uh, you just plug in the parameters from the uh, academic Vera, um, edition. And by the way, over here, view you shall me, you can from here, you can open up the you shall me to get your information. <clears throat> you plug in the information over here and you get back this table, which you can then play around with uh, and organize it in different ways. And you can also print it or save it. That's the, the first search. Uh, the second type of search is according to Masechet chapter in Mishnah, uh, which I think is much less useful because since you can't define the, uh, the exact parameters of the sugya, you have to give him an entire parak or lacha, you'll get back a tremendous amount of information. Uh, for example, if I wanted to search for those ten, same 10 lines using Masechet, Perik, and Mishnah, I would basically have to search the entire Masechet Brachot, Mish, uh, Mishnah Aleph, and look what happens now. So here we got back 446 results, which, which is really quite useless. You know, sometimes too much information really doesn't help you too much. So I initially did this before I had access to the, uh, to the, uh, academic, the Hebrew Academy version, just so people who did not have the book could do some kind of search. But now that you have this Academy version at your fingertips here, I, I think this, this search over here, according to Masechet, Perik and Mishnah, is quite useless, unless you know, you're preparing a course <clears throat> 
and you want to be able to choose, you know, what what uh, what what uh, masechet of Yerushalmi should I learn? <clears throat> and by doing this, you can just get a, a feel of just how much inf information there is out there, and decide, you know, whether you want to teach that or you want to teach something with more or less uh, uh, information. Okay, so the third search is the word search. This I find to be a, a particularly powerful search uh, for a particular uh, use. This search will search all the Rishonim texts. Oh, wait a minute, where am I? Guys, am I, are we together? Hello? Oh, what just happened? We can hear you. Oh, I mean, okay. we're here. yeah, I think we're here. Yeah, we, hear you. we can hear you. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not sharing anymore, am I? Yes, you are. You yeah, are? Yeah, we see it, yeah. Oh, that's weird. I, I, don't, I don't see that I'm sharing. You see me moving up and down? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Right, I don't, uh... fine. Ah, there we go. Okay. Totally now... fine. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, okay. Yes. So we're up to the word search. So the word search, I am able to search all those texts of Rishonim, which I've showed you before that appear in the tables. Why? Why would I need such a thing? Uh, so I'll just give you a very recent example. Uh, I'm, I'm actually learning Megillah, the, the third chapter now. And I came across in Shita Lamasechet Megillah, which is a Rishon, which does not appear in the, um, <clears throat> in, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, well, a week ago, it does not appear in the database and it does not appear in Project Shoot. And I came across uh, Yerushalmi, which I'm not aware about, of. There's a story here about Uziah who became a leper. And this he quotes it from the Yushalmi, and I can't find it in the Yushalmi. But then I said to myself, I wonder if there are other Rishonim who quote this non-existent Yushalmi. And the way I did it is going to this word search, and I put in the word She Nitz Tarea, just for example. And I was hoping that if any other Rishon also quotes this Yushalmi, this non-existent Yushalmi, it would come up. So I do the search. And look at that. Well, I mean, the, the first result, Shita Masechet Megillah, is this. Because as a consequence, you know, I quickly uh, indexed uh, this little booklet here. Uh, and look at this, you get uh, two results. There's the Shita, and there's also the Tosfot. The Tosfot Megillah also quotes Yerushalmi Mefaresh Uziah Shenitztarea. Now, if you look here on the right-hand side, uh, under Masechet, I have here written Eino Lefanenu, which means this Yerushalmi being quoted does not exist in, the, in our Yerushalmi. And there are actually quite a lot of these Eino Lefanenus. We'll hopefully talk about that a bit later. Um, but here we are. So here there, as there's actually another, another Rishon. The truth is that there's also, there are a few of them. You just have to know to choose the proper words. I chose the word Shinitzterea, but um, if, you learn, if you choose a different word, you might, you might get, you know, let me just see if I can do it. Um, uh, let's try, let's try what happens with Uziah. Or you just have to pick the, pick the proper lines, is yeah. Okay, here you get five results. And um, not all of them are ours, but here there's the Tosfot, there's the Shita, and there's, there's also the Rosh. The Rosh also quotes this Yushalmi. So look what happens. I, I, had, I found this Rishon who quotes Yushalmi, which I'm not aware of. And by doing this word search, I was able to find more Rishonim who also quote this very same non-existent Yushalmi. Once you have a group of Rishonim quoting the same non-existent Yushalmi, you know, you have at least some material to work with and try to understand where, this, where, where they got this from. This is also a good opportunity to show you the use of this Kalam He'ara. Ordinarily, when, quote, when quoting Yushalmi, I really have nothing to say, but in, in these cases of Eno Lefanenu, 
so for example, here I can refer you to the Imre Bina, Siman Bet Od Hey, Amud whatever. And this, this Achron, the Imre Bina, actually talks about this non existent Yushalmi. So you'll see that you have the same comment going throughout these cases. <clears throat> um, let me give you another example. I mean, let's say you're, you're researching a particular name of an uh, Tana or an Amora, and you've exhausted all the places in the Leiden manuscript, the Yushalmi that we have in front of us. And you're wondering if perhaps any Rishon quotes other sugyot with this name, even though it doesn't appear in our Yushalmi. So here again, you would just plug in that name, Rabbi Abun or what have you, and uh, you might be surprised with uh, additional quotes in Yushalmi through the Yushonim who actually have this name that you're looking for. So I found this, this type of uh, uh, search to be quite useful. I'm saying again, this search will search the text of the Rishonim that are on the database. There's no search on this database which actually searches the Yushalmi itself. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna move on to the subject search. Subject is a very subjective search. Uh, as I've gone through, uh, indexing the Rishonim, you come across all these uh, interesting, or at least in my opinion, interesting uh, comments the, the Rishonim have about the Yushalmi. Um, for example, you have sometimes the Rishonim complaining that they don't have access to the Yushalmi. So do you see what, I, what I'm sitting on here? Ein la Rishonim Yerushalmi. So if you, if you search for this subject, then you'll get back a list, not too great, seven results where various Rishonim complain that they don't have the Yushalmi. For example, look, this Maharami Rutenberg in Shut, whatever, he says, Yerushalmi ein biyadi. Or on top of him, the Marachor Zarua says, well, when this was told to me, advarim, lo hayali Yerushalmi davodazara. Or the Ravya, Yerushalmi shel Eruvin en biyadi. I don't, I don't even have Yerushalmi in Eruvin. So the, this I thought was, you know, very interesting. It might be useful if you're trying to uh, assess, you know, the, the spread of the Yerushalmi and, and you know, how it was spread. Uh, as I said before, I mean, the one who chose these subjects was myself. And so it's very subjective. Um, this would give you a list, a gigantic list, of all those all those quotes in, in uh, of the Rishonim in the Rishonim of Yushalmi, which we don't have. So there are 569 su such results out of 32,000. So you can do the percentage uh, yourself. Um, but these are all Yerushalmis, which we don't have. Here again, you see that more often than not, the, the Ha'ara column has some type of comment, you know, somebody who spoke about it or talks about it or, or whatever. Um, uh, other examples, I'm not going to go through them. For example, Ta'ut. Ta'ut means, well, at least again, I, I believe, that the guy, the, the Rishon is quoting the Yushalmi, but it's not really Yushalmi. So either it might say, uh, you, it might be Yerusha instead of Yushalmi. He might be saying Yushalmi when he, he means a medrash. Sometimes he says Yushalmi and, and it's a Babli. So, you know, I don't, I don't know how, what to do about that, but at least here you have a list of all those places. And again, we won't go through the entire list, but there are all kinds of different comments that I thought would be interesting. Uh, one of them uh, might be, uh, or another of them might be Yachas, where is it? Um, uh, Yachas la Yerushalmi. Now, sometimes Rishonim tell you what they think about the Yerushalmi. Usually it's how much weight does the Yerushalmi have versus the Bavli when you're talking about Psakalacha. You know, sometimes they would say, you know, I don't care about the Yushalmi, whatever the Babli says goes, Vizel. And sometimes they say, well, you know, of course the Babli is, is the weightier one, but if I can use the Yushalmi to explain the Babli, then fantastic. So this is also is a very, very interesting area um, for research is what the attitude of the various Rishonim uh, is 
towards the Yushalmi. And as I said before, there are a million other things here, uh, but again, this is very, very subjective. <clears throat> uh, the final search that can be done is the comment. Uh, this allows you to search that comment column. I think this is really more for me than other people because a lot of times I remember uh, that I commented uh, on one of those rows and I don't remember where it is. So, you know, I just put in the word from the comments and I'm able to find it. Just for example, if I put in the word Fuchs, you know, um, Uzi Fuchs has an MA about the uh, Orzaru and the Yushalmi. And he talks a lot about the Yushalmi's that the, that the Orzaru quotes, which you don't have. So you'll see here, I got 177 results within this column of Ha'ala, where the word Fuchs appears, which is going to be Uzi Fuchs. And you see that all these results are really references to that M.A. Uh, of his, Yonim Besefer Ozeroah. And there he actually talks uh, about the various Yerushalmi's, the Ozeroah quotes, which we don't have. Okay, so we finished uh, the search button. So we have like four, five, five, uh, five different types of searches. As you've seen, the tables are, are always identical. Um, if there are any questions or comments up until now. Uh, okay, so we know all about the search button. The Talmud Yushalmi we saw before, that just enables you to open up the uh, Yushalmi usually when you're looking for the uh, parameters that you want to use uh, in your searches. Report error simply opens up an email to me. If you find a mistake, a typo, if you think something is missing, uh, I've gotten comments, for example, listen, you said that this Rishon is referring to Yushalmi over here, you're wrong. He's really referring to a different Yushalmi, you know, whatever. This is a uh, crowdsourcing really. So I, I, you know, I, I very much appreciate any, any uh, comment uh, through this uh, email about, uh, about, the, uh, about the database. If you have ideas, why don't you add this feature, that feature, this is working, this isn't working, all can be done through this report error. Uh, Nihul is in Hebrew. This is, again, this is my back office. This is where I can, you know, uh, this is my administration button. So you wouldn't see this on, on your database. And finally, you have the help button. The help really opens up a lot of peripheral information about the Atar. So pressing how to use would open up a PDF, which hopefully uh, says the same thing I'm saying now, which is basically a, a how to use manual. Meanwhile, it's in Hebrew, but I'm like one third done with an English manual. So hopefully within a few weeks when you are on the English a part of the, uh, of the database and you press how to use, you'll actually get the English um, manual. Browse you shall me is just another way of getting to the uh, Academy you shall me. Uh, indexed literature, this just uh, tells you, why isn't it working? I don't know. Here we go. Um, here you can see what actually has been indexed. So here are the four databases, Rishonim, Research, Geniza Fragments, and Achronim. Um, if you press Rishonim, <clears throat> and let's say you go to author, then you'll get a list of all the Rishonim that are on the database. Uh, and then you can choose, I mean, let's take an impressive one. I'll take the Ramban, let's say, uh, Moshe ben Nachman. And let's see what we have of the Ramban on, uh, on the database. Here's Moshe ben Nachman. And I click search. And here I get back a list of all the different treatises of the Ramban, which I've actually indexed. Um, I think this, this bottom here is very important. For example, I tell you, listen, I went through Igeret HaKodesh of the Ramban, but I didn't find anything there. So I mean, had I not had this line here, you would have said, you know, I wonder if the, you know, you're researching you know, the, the Ramban and Yerushalmi about something. And uh, this way, you know, <clears throat> not to go to the Gerat HaKodesh and start looking for, for Yerushalmi there, because I'm telling you, listen, I was, I've been there, done that, or Hilchot Nida, 
or Igera Teramban. Uh, other place, other things, for example, the Ramban Hil Chotne Darim, I have no idea why, but the, the uh, Barilan Shud project did not index it. So finally, a while ago, I just went through it and collected all the Yushalmis. So I'm telling you here, you know, even though the default is that I use the text in uh, the Barilan Shud project, <coughs> sorry, in, in this case, I've, I've used this text, the Mahon Rav Herschler's text. Or his introduction to Pirush Aniyov, I've used the Chevelle uh, uh, text. Um, so this is what you get here. You just get a list of everything which is indexed. Uh, research is the same. You would get a list of all the various authors, uh, you know, whose who's, uh, work I've, I've uh, indexed. And, um, you know, you can choose that. I'm also, again, I'm looking for something Im impressive. Uh, let me just see. Anything? No, okay. So I'll go to, uh, to let's see, to Leib Moskowitz. And here again, you'd get a list of all the, uh, the papers that uh, by Leib, which I've actually, uh, you know, indexed. So this is, you know, if you're just wondering, you know, does this database uh, cover so and so or such and such, then you've got it. We've shown him research. Uh, I'm going to skip over Geniza fragments because this is out of date. Uh, th this really should just give you one one line, which would be this book. But prior to the uh, Zusman's Geniza Yushalmi, there were like maybe twenty or thirty places where uh, Geniza fragments have been published. So I just reference you to there, but that's kind of irrelevant today. And Achronim is the same, <clears throat> would be a list of Achronim. Uh, here you can see that it's a much, much smaller list. You know, there's just a few, a few, Rishon, a few Achronim there and, uh, and what they have. Uh, explanatory video is basically a, a lecture I gave at Van Leer a few years ago. Over there, I don't explain how to use the database, but more about how the database was built. That's what I, when I was uh, replied to an answer at the beginning, you know, of, of using those keywords and so on and so forth. So you have that here again in Hebrew. Library is another way of accessing all the PDFs that I'm allowed, hopefully, to uh, to have on my on my uh, on on this on this uh, site, so here you have in alphabetical order uh, the name of the author, the name of of the work, and finally by pressing show it would open this up for you. Uh, this might be interesting for you to know. There's a short article by Nehemia Briel in German uh, from 1869, but uh, about uh, Sugyen Sukkah. And I actually had it translated from German into Hebrew, uh, into Hebrew. So here you would get the, uh, the Hebrew translation. And at the end of this translation, you get the uh, original German. But in any event, this is just, you know, just gives you all the, uh, uh, all the, all the, all the um, uh, academic work that I have uh, available online. Okay, let's close this guy and we're back to this list. And article about the database, again, this would be equivalent to the explanatory video, except that it's a, it's a paper that appeared in uh, L.A. Sefer quite a long time ago. Database in the news, I guess this is the way that I pat myself on the back. Uh, people who actually acknowledge uh, that they used it and benefited from the database. So you can get a list here of those different places where this is acknowledged. And finally, institution member list. Uh, this is a list just of you know, all the different institutions who currently have a subscription. Um, who was the guy who, who said before that he used the that he used the site? Are you still here? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, I used it. Yeah, it so was, is that yeah, that's probably why you got you got an email from me because you probably tried to access it from your house or something, and uh, and we're, we're, you weren't able to get through to the JTS uh, subscription. 
So whenever I see somebody trying to access it uh, as a private person, I, uh, as soon as possible, as you, as you can testify, uh, I send him basically a link to this list and tell him, you know, if you're interested, either you can buy a subscription, but there's a, there are quite a number of, of institutions which, uh, through which you can ex access this uh, free of charge. So that's the importance of this list. And uh, finally here at the bottom, you've got some, some information, some thanks to getting the, the various copyrights. And uh, here again, you can see how it grows. This is just a, a statistical list of the number of records in each one of the databases. So you see that by far the Rishonim is the largest and then uh, academic research, a chronim and the Gniza fragments. Uh, just for the sake of comparison, uh, Zussman, Yaakov Zussman has his famous uh, Karteset, his famous uh, card system with uh, what he claims to be a full uh, list of all quotes of uh, Yushalmi and Yushonim, but he has 36,000. So I'm slowly but surely getting close to his, uh, to his number. Uh, I think that's about it. And of course, I mean, you have the little flags here, the American and Israeli flag, which allow you to uh, switch between languages. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in Israel, most of these flags are the UK. Like uh, any Israeli uh, atar or site, which has an English interface would have the UK flag. But being a, a proud American citizen, I decided to choose the, uh, the American flag. Uh, okay, so that, that is about it regarding the, uh, the database. If there are any comments or questions, now is a great time. Yes, to ask. I, I have a question. I don't recall you um, uh, mentioning the ability of this database to search, say, particular phrases uh, in the Yerushalmi. Can you, uh, can you do that? No, you, would, you, would, you, you should recall the opposite. This database cannot uh, or does not search the Yerushalmi at all. There is no text of the, or there is no searchable text of Yerushalmi on the database. The only text that can be searched here are those uh, snippets of Rishonim, which are here. This does not search the Yerushalmi. That's Project Ashut. The Bar Ilan Shoot project would, would enable you to search for uh, for, for, for such things within the Yushalmi. I don't search the Yushalmi at all. I search the Rishonim at best about the Yushalmi. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any further comments or questions? Okay, uh, you should just know that I'm, uh, I'm pretty uh, freely available. So if you have any questions or comments or whatever in the future, you can feel free to uh, to contact me by by email or whatever, and I'd be I'd appreciate that very much. Uh, I guess I'll end off with a little curious secret here. Uh, does anybody recognize this uh, little Geniza fragment here? Right, this little this little fragment here. So uh, anyway, I don't recognize it either. But all I can tell you is that this is not even Yushalmi. This is the Babli. It's just that I didn't, I couldn't find at the time, I couldn't find a nice uh, picture of the Yerushalmi manuscript. So I just put in a, a little piece of Bavli here. So if you ever, you know, want to know, is there any Bavli on this database? Yes. This little <laughs> picture up here is pure Bavli. Okay, Yofi, so thank you very much. I will send a, a link, I guess, to the YouTube of this, uh, of this demo, I guess, to know me. So if people are, are interested in, you know, uh, or other people are interested in, in getting this demo, so you'll, you'll have that link uh, at, your, at your access. So thank you very much. Thank Lila you. Tov, thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Use it well. Yeah, it's so great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, bye-bye. So glad it happened and it's all working. Thank you, be well. Good, bye -bye. yeah, yeah, I'm happy that it's working. <laughs> okay, bye.